Okay, this is uh, chapter 21, part 8. And this is my commentary and the commentary of Rashi on Isaiah 53, so you can see the differences. And the differences in what Rashi does will be shown here soon in uh, chapters 23 and 24 between Jews for Judaism and Toby a singer of Outreach Judaism, saying that Isaiah 53 describes all of the people, all of the Jewish people gathered together at one time as one man. It's only happened twice. At Oreb, when all the Israelites gathered, and according to Ezra, when all 13 tribes of the exiles returned to build the second temple in Jerusalem. Okay, this is picking up with verse 1, which is a part of uh, part 7. And I'm going to read the last paragraph I read in part 7. The witnesses have never heard that the divine beings are the Holy Spirit, who is the angel of God's presence. The angel of the Lord of Isaiah 63. And an angel, that's where you find the angel of God's presence and the Holy Spirit. While not uh, specifically joined together, it's two, it's two verses together. Uh, God said that's just the way it had to be written so I could teach it. God created it an angel. And for his body, he did not give him a human form and wings. No, his body is the spirit of God. And God is in his spirit. Just as you are and just as I am. This is the very angel who went before the Israelites in the Exodus and God was in him. Remember, God told Moses, I'm going to go with you to Egypt, and I'm going to bring you back. Well, when he, when he tells Moses, I'm going to send my angel before you. Well, God's right there. He's there, too. They're, they're, they're inseparable. They can be separated. There's scripture on that. But for the most part, they're together. This is Exodus chapter... 23 verses 20 through 22. And this is God speaking. I just mentioned this. I am sending an angel before you to guard you on the way and to bring you to the place that I have made ready. Pay heed to him and obey him. Do not defy him, for he will not pardon your offense. Since my name Hashem is in him. There it is right there in the Torah. And you can also find it in Ezekiel. But if you obey him and do all that I say, obey the angel, but doing all that God says, see, they, they get intertwined. And they do in 63. I think it's verses uh, 7 and 8 or 6 and 7. I will be an enemy to your enemies and a foe to your foes. The witnesses had never heard. You know, can't believe. Yeah, well, anyway, that's I've gone over that. The witnesses had never heard that God created his spirit, is in his spirit, and his spirit is the body of the angel of God's presence and the angel of the Lord. How the angel of the Lord is in the burning bush and God speaks to Moses. They had never heard how a man and divine beings wrestled with Jacob. And God spoke to Jacob, renaming him Israel. How the ground was holy, where Joshua fell to the ground before a Gentile with raised sword, 
This is in Joshua. It's about three verses where you can find out what a man divine beings is. Oh, and Joshua said, What does my Lord command the servant? The captain of the Lord's host, captain, he's not a Lord. This tells you God's there. And, and the following. The captain answered Joshua, Remove your sandals from your feet, for the place where you stand is holy. And Joshua did so. That's Joshua chapter 5, verses 14 through 15. The very words God spoke to Moses at the burning bush. Same words. The Lord is with the captain. And where the Lord is, so is the angel of his presence. The captain's a man of divine beings. As were all the prophets of the Jewish people. If you can hear God speak, his spirit has a lit upon you, which means he has a lit upon you. They both have entered you. And God manipulates your minds for the conversations the two of you have. That's how it works with me, and I am taught that is how it worked with the prophets who would write God's words. How Elijah, they had never heard. How Elijah the Tishbite, an inhabitant of Vermont Gilead, an Arab Assyrian town. And uh, its land east of the River Jordan is also a Gentile. The Israelites did not go live in, in, in Arab land. Okay, I'm going to skip something here. Where the person, and he is a person, he's an angel. Well, I think we all agree angels are persons. Judaism doesn't think so. They say the Spirit of God is not a person. They also say Jacob wrestled with an angel. So, you got to wash him close, people. <laughs> Where the person of the Spirit is, so is the person in, the, in God's presence of the Holy God, whose person is also... Oh, that's not right. That needs to be changed. The angel of his presence, apparently it does have to be changed. The angel of his presence and God are always together. Uh, the reason for that is it says uh, God is also a spirit when he is in his spirit. And God's not spirit. He has a spirit and he stays within his spirit who, like God, has no image or form. But he's not spirit. You want me to get his definition is that he is absolute power, absolute knowledge, and he is his creation. So in Malachi 3, when God says, if the, the way is not cleared for me by my messenger Elijah, when I come, I'm going to bring utter destruction to the land of Israel. What he means is, if you don't build that temple, if the way's not cleared by me, as it turns out, because I'm Elijah and Moshiach and God's uh, righteous servant and the prophet like Moses, four righteous servants to come, one description of a righteous servant that fits me. A description that wouldn't fit either of those. Wouldn't it fit King David? Elijah or Moses. That description would not fit their lives. It fits mine. And I handle their duties. This book was dictated to me. What's unique about Moses? God dictated the Torah to him. First five books of the Bible. It's certainly not Joshua. He, he was a leader, but there's plenty of leaders in the Middle East at that time. Plenty of leaders. But what was unique? 
I don't even know if God uh, spoke to Joshua for sure, although he probably wrote Joshua. But we don't know that to be fact. Now, Ezekiel is a host of the Lord's host. A man in divine beings. Ezekiel. Oh, he's definitely a prophet. If he talked to God, you were a prophet. Ezekiel, chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. And he said to me, O mortal, stand up on your feet that I may speak to you. As he spoke to me, a spirit entered me and set me upon my feet. And I heard what was being spoken to me from God. Not until the spirit entered him. That's the angel of God's presence, the Holy Spirit, and God is in his spirit. And so when that spirit aligns upon you, like in chapter 11 on Moshiach, it just as well will read the Spirit of God and God, or the presence of God, alit upon the twig of the shoe of the stump of Jesse, instantly becoming a man in divine beings, which, what, what a blessing for the Jewish people. They don't have any idea of what this man Moshiach is going to be like. And they've been filled with ridiculous things, like he's going to have... Uh, all of Israel following Torah. He's going to perfect the world. The world's going to speak Hebrew. Just all these ridiculous things they throw out there that cannot happen. And no man of his own could. But I'll tell you this. Even with God with me, that still can't be done. He could tell me exactly what I need to do and it, it wouldn't be enough. We couldn't get that done. That's from God himself. This is God speaking to Ezekiel. But he does not hear God speaking with his ears. Well, speaking until at the same moment a spirit enters him and sets him upon his feet. The spirit of God entering a man and God speaking means the angel of God's presence who is spirit alighted upon him, and that God is in him. Just as the Spirit of God alights upon and enters the Anointed One of Isaiah 11. I know I just said that twice, but this time I was reading how God would say it and had me type it. Uh, how can you believe? This is still verse 1. How the Lord is symbolized in the story where he appeared and spoke to Abraham by the terabits of memory as three men standing near him. The three men represent a host of the Lord's host, a man of divine beings. It's three persons. There are three persons within me. My person <laughs> that I thought was originally there by himself and probably was originally the person of God and the person of the Spirit. God's Spirit. It's tough. I mean, really, it's, well, it's been 16 years. It's a slow process to get used to. And our communication is on many levels and excellent. And my knowledge of what he can do with me. The Lord... And the angel of his presence with the man. That's what those three men represent. Two of the men are described as angels in the next chapter of Genesis. They are only men in this chapter for the purpose of symbolizing a host of the Lord's host. Yeah, where God spoke to Abraham, right. You get these three men standing there. As, and God speaks. A man wrestles with Jacob, God speaks. There's a burning bush, but it does not, uh, uh, doesn't burn up. 
and the angel of the Lord is in the bush and God speaks. See, all these things start to make sense. He opens up the Torah to you, son. And, and Moses, I can show you, I think, four different... Well, we got four. We got three stories on Moses, so at least three places you can see where he's a man of divine beings and definitely a prophet of God. Okay, this is Midrash form. It's the end of verse one. Upon whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? His redemption, victory, and vindication. Vindication, victory. Uh, the rabbis just forget about that. They say it's going to be a redemption for them. They don't mention God's vindication. And uh, they teach them a messianic era, which is basically heaven on earth. It's not in the Hebrew Bible. And Rambam's got a long dissertation on it. But he just made it up like he made up Two chapters on the laws of King Moshe. They're not in the Bible either. There's not going to be a kingdom. God knows everything from beginning to end. He knew when the Jewish people finally returned, and he knew Europe was going to make them want to leave eventually. And uh, okay, now he wants me to keep going. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, okay. Upon whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? My commentary. Or God's actually, but it's in my name. His redemption, victory, and vindication from a sinful man whose life had been lowly, full of grievous events and serious injuries of man of pain and suffering familiar with disease that the Spirit of God alights upon to the crown of God's righteous servant who rises to great heights. See, I'm just like these witnesses in the first six verses who, who are all suffering from guilt because they did not follow the laws of God. That's why I offer myself for guilt. It's really, it would read easier if, it, it, anyway, is to remove guilt. I become the righteous servant by going through the fire of refinement, suffer all those big words, wounded, punished, chastised, crushed, bruised, maltreated. That was all done by God to me in, in his power and his words. To change my personality. You're not born to be a prophet. He likes to... Uh, Pick people who have a furious spirit, like Moses and Ezekiel. And then kind of beats it out of you. So you become more humble. <laughs> he, he likes, he just likes doing the five or five and I think. It's brutal. And this, of course, could not be Jesus. You know, Jesus suffered one day in his life, okay? And he's on the cross for eight hours. And gives up and releases his spirit to God. That's it. That's the only suffering we know of other than the fact the shortest verse in the New Testament is Jesus wept. And he cried because nobody would believe he was who he said he was. And he had just raised Lazarus from the dead. All those miracles he could do that we all know about didn't do him a bit of good on being recognized, as it turns out, as he claimed, the man of Isaiah 11 and 53. And that's all Christianity does today. Well, you just need to get to chapter 22, where you'll see that Jesus doesn't fit in any of the verses, save one. And that's the one that says he's a sinner. Because he's, God has got a top ten of the lies of Jesus in the New Testament. Oh, you can't, you can't miss them. Well, I guess the Christians do. They don't want to see them. This is Isaiah 11, verse 10. The stock of Jesse that has remained standing shall become a standard to peoples. Nations shall seek his counsel, and his abode shall be honored. 
<clears throat> the abode of the righteous servant is humble. When the Lord cuts him off from the land of the living, it's verse 8. He did the same thing to Ezekiel. Uh, and what it means is cut, cut him off from the world of material things and society. And in the end, the abode of the servant is one to be honored in Isaiah chapter 11, verse 10. So from a poor man to a rich man, with the many as his portion and the multitude as his spoil. My followers, the people who I make righteous and who want to follow me. And if they would listen to these videos or read the book, they'd want to. Especially after you finish with chapters 23 and 24 on Tobias Singer and Jews for Judaism. I think Kravitz did the commentary at Jews for Judaism, but I've really only heard Michael Skoback talk about it. The time to come in Jeremiah 31, that is the day of the Lord, it is also the time to come of the man described in Isaiah 53. He will have been a sinful man whose life has been lowly, full of grievous events and serious injuries, a man of pain and suffering, familiar with disease, that the Spirit of God alights upon to the crown of God's righteous servant who rises to great heights and God brings the redemption of the Jewish people through him with covenants and the third temple. This is Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 26 through 28. By the way, that man is me. And that's why God did the second book that he had me, that he dictated to me and I taught. It's my life to show how I fit that man of suffering, familiar with disease, injuries, crushed with disease, cancer. He put it in there and he took it away and he made sure I didn't die. <laughs> Takes credit for a lot of things. And to his righteous servant, God does not perfect the world. He has his vindication. Chapter, Isaiah chapter 51, verses 32 to 33. Thus said the Lord, your Lord, your God who champions his people, herewith I take from your hand the cup of reeling, the bowl, the cup of my wrath. You shall never drink it again. I will put it in the hands of your tormentors who have commanded you. Get down that we may walk all over you so that you made your back like the ground, like a street to passerby. That would be Christianity foremost. They took the book God dictated to many, many of the Jewish people, all the prophets, for his people. And the Christians take it and attach it to the New Testament and say, uh, y'all don't... Y'all don't know how to read. This book's prophetic of Jesus Christ. And it's not even close. Again, watch the video on chapter 22. And don't miss 23 and 24 either. I know they're all 53s, but 23 and 24 are just a few of the verses. Verse 2. This is Rashi first and his, his Bible. And he came up like a sapling before it, and like a root from dry ground. But he had neither form nor comeliness, and we saw him that he had no appearance. Now shall we desire him? Rashi. And this goes along with, in chapter 52, 13 through 15, we were so appalled by his appearance. I have a better answer for that here. Rashi, and he came up, we're talking, when he says he, he's talking about all of the people, all of the Jewish people gathered as one man. And he came up like a sampling before it. I don't even know how that would work there. 
this people, before this greatness came to it, was a very humble people. All of them. And it came up by itself like a sapling of the saplings of the trees. Midrash. And like a root. Okay. Rashi says he came up from dry land. That's what it says. He came from every land. Neither form had he in the beginning, nor comeliness. Was that it? Was that the commentary? Oh, okay. Neither form. And he adds, had he in the beginning, nor comeliness. I don't know what time he's talking about. What was it at Or? Was it in Jerusalem? Did all this happen? Coming up from dry ground. And... It's the only time they all gather. And it's not even possible today. They're too spread out all over the world. And too many of them don't even practice Judaism. They're not observant Jews. Only 30% by last survey is observant in Israel. And we saw him that he had no appearance. That's Midrash. Now shall we desire him? And when we saw, this is his commentary, and when we saw him, we saw us, is what he's saying right here. We saw us. And when we saw him from the beginning without an appearance, how could we desire him? Then he puts, now shall we desire them? Commentary. This is a question. How <laughs> we saw us. That's what he just said. Keith. Commentary from God. And this is uh, verse 2 from the JPS, which I've discussed plenty. For he has grown. By his favor, like a tree crown, like a tree trunk out of arid ground. He had no form or beauty that we should look at him, no charm that we should find him pleasing. Midrash, breaking this verse down into these segments and commenting. Now shall we desire him. Commentary. If the dry land was a Christian country, and his form was a Gentile under the Jewish law, the Halakha in the beginning. And that's in the scripture. God comes from Adam, and of the Jewish people, none are with him. He's got his representation with him, though. That's me. God's righteous servant, Moshiach, who is also the prophet like Moses. And I've got two covenants to deliver. That's why God's, as much as anything, it's... He's back because the people came back. That's all that had to be done. Everybody come back, form Israel, and I'll come back. You say, yeah, but that was 70 years ago. Well, they had to get it looking good, and in 1957, I was born. And that's when he came to me. But I had to be older and this and that, and go through a lot of worldly experiences to fit these verses. And he orchestrated my life. It, it was seen that he orchestrated every one of my injuries. And I have at least 20 surgical scars on this body. I mean, I've been shot through the abdomen, people, from two feet away. Went in on the right side about where my bladder is and came out in the back left. Well, it actually lodged in my left buttock, but uh, that was about five scars right there. Four or five. Lots of different surgeries. Now shall we desire him? Would he be attracted to the Jewish people? Would I be attracted? Not at all. If he comes from a Christian country, oh, not at all. Yeah, I mean, come on. The Jewish people and the Gentiles, they call it the nations, the heathen group. <laughs> Don't, don't, uh, 